Well, I've seen no evidence that the Houthis had the capability to launch this attack on, on the Saudis. And obviously, I'll be getting additional briefings later today. But I think the president's zigzagging foreign policy, where he even tweets that the United States of America would wait on what the kingdom, which he meant Saudi Arabia, wants us to do, is extraordinarily inappropriate. Uh, we have no mutual defense treaty with Saudi Arabia. Um, this is an outgrowth of the kind of approach the president's brought, where he has spurned our allies, where we had a united front against Iran. We no longer have that united front because the president took us out of the JCPOA. We're also seeing some of the president's actions end up stimulating more tension in what is a obviously volatile region. Um, so I would be I think it would be extraordinarily inappropriate if the president in any f way committed American forces based upon the information that we have at this point uh, to go after Iran based upon their alleged attack against Saudi. And this is what comes when you've got a lack of stability in the leadership of our national security establishment. When you switch out defense secretaries, when you switch out national security advisors, when you only have an acting director of national intelligence, you know, we are seeing the results of that in that we don't provide a consistent, clear policy. And to think about this, we are seeing this administration zig and zag before all of the world's leaders come together next week at the United Nations. And the fact that there is not a clear policy, the fact that the president seems to be saying he wants to get a recommendation from Saudi Arabia on what he would then propose for American foreign policy does not send a strong signal of competence uh, to folks around the world. And again, with all the challenges that JCPOA had, uh, I doubt that you would have seen these type of activities if there had still been a united front that we had with our European allies. I uh, just had a uh briefing by the Vice President about the uh, situation with Iran. The goal, according to the Vice President, is to restore deterrence, which has been lost. To those who suggest that, suggest that our getting out of the Iranian nuclear agreement has led to um, this problem, you, you're rewriting history. Before we got out of the Iran nuclear agreement, the Iranians took the money from the agreement, built up their military machine, and been wreaking havoc on the Mideast ever since. What does this say to me, that the shooting down of the drone where we had a measured response and the president got a lot of credit by not attacking, they saw that as a sign of weakness. Can you imagine the thought process that went into attacking an oil refinery in Saudi Arabia? That's an act of war by any reasonable definition. I find it virtually impossible to believe that something like this happened without the Ayatollah's blessing. So if you want to restore deterrence, which is the right goal, that we need to put something on the table different than we're doing now. I like the idea of a regional approach, not U.S. alone. Do you want him to take some sort of military strike? I, I think I think that is the most likely response, from my point of view, to restore deterrence. Clearly, when they shot down the drone, a measured response was seen as weakness. Can you imagine the thought process that went into attacking an oil refinery of a neighboring nation, uh, thinking that's going to make uh, if we give them a pass here, they just will escalate. And Israel and the region are very much in their crosshairs. And if you think it's bad today, wait five years from now when they have more capability. When they're further down the road developing nuclear weapon, they have bigger and stronger missiles. So I think the president needs to act now and he need it, needs to act with partners in a fashion so the Iranians will not do this ever again.